Hey, what's up, Baltimore? Welcome to the Voices of the People podcast, presented to you by Greater Baltimore Urban League. This podcast is your dynamic platform for authentic conversations, diverse perspectives, and uplifting narratives from the heart of our community. Get ready to tune in and be inspired as we amplify the voices of change makers, innovators, and everyday heroes shaping the fabric of Baltimore and beyond. From insightful interviews to empowering stories of resilience and progress, Voices of the People is your go-to destination for positivity, empowerment, and connection. Hey guys, it's your host, Shia Rice, and welcome to the Voices of the People podcast. And today, we're interviewing, introduce yourself, Kevin Seawright. And Mr. Kevin is the chairman of the Park Heights Renaissance. So, tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so um, Park Heights Renaissance is obviously stationed in Baltimore, Northwest Baltimore, yeah. um, Park Heights uh, area of the city. Mm -hmm. um, I am the board chair there. We have an outstanding um, CEO and, and staff there that does amazing work mm -hmm. uh, in Park Heights, uh, Ms. Jolanda Jiggets. Um, we're doing a huge uh, revitalization in Park Heights. Um, we have built multifamily units. Uh, we have also uh, did home ownership on Loyola Northway. Mm. Uh, we continue to move throughout Park Heights. Uh, we look to be a huge component and partner in the Pimlico redevelopment space, mm -hmm. uh, which if everybody's been watching uh, the news here and, and looked at uh, Annapolis mm -hmm. over the last few weeks, you, you heard a lot about um, the redevelopment of the field. Mm -hmm. um, we're really looking at, at space and, and how to build, uh, be a part of that new construction, mm -hmm. um, but that it also helps the residents of, of Park Heights. Yes. Uh, you started your company in 2015, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I was, tell us why you started your company. I think for us, for RPS, home ownership was is very important. Mm -hmm. um, Having individuals build generational wealth, which home build, home ownership is the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very important. Mm -hmm. um, I was this inner city kid. Uh, I grew up in a Philadelphia row house. Um, luckily, I had you know two outstanding parents and, and brothers, and had um, a support system. Mm -hmm. um, but I always wanted more than just um, to grow up and, and see individuals that look like me be successful. Exactly. Uh, and that was hugely important. So my path was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I moved uh, to Maryland and I, you know, I worked in, worked in government and got a chance to learn operations and um, had different positions there, whether it was, you know, director of finance or CFO, chief of staff, like carried mm -hmm. a lot of different divisions, um, positions, I'm sorry, and got to know a lot of people. Yeah. Right. So uh, people will tell you about in, in Maryland networking. Yeah. And people will <laughs> tell you I have a problem talking. Yeah. Hence, I'm here today. <laughs> um, so, you know, I got a chance to, to really learn people and, mm -hmm. and learn the operation. It was always something that uh, I wanted to build. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2015, you know, just took the gamble. Um, I was still working and I was up and down traveling. At that point, I was um, I was working in Newark uh, okay. at a redevelopment. Um, Operation. You were living here though? And I was, I always had a home. Okay. I was always, so I was back and forth. I was okay. traveling for work. And um, started, um, had really good partners, um, whether it was realtors, whether it was operational teams that I used to work with. Mm -hmm. and, and our goal was that first time home buyers just get exactly what they see on TV, mm -hmm. right? It was, you know, okay. a lot of times in our community, we were taught to just buy home, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I when I first, I brought my first home in uh, 2001. It wasn't remodeled. It wasn't anything. It was just like just achieve As home is. ownership. Yeah. Just, just get it, yeah. right? And, and that's kind of, and it's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say that it's nothing wrong with that or that that's wrong. Uh, but at the same time, you know, everybody was watching the, the TV shows and, mm -hmm. and, and seeing all these new houses, but a lot of those weren't hitting our communities, mm -hmm. right? And um, for us, when you know we looked at it with the partners that I have, it was like, well, how do we make sure that individuals in our communities be able to achieve the same things that others may have? Mm -hmm. And um, we started it, and it, it, it flew off, and, and we're still we're still here today. So many people come into this. Um, in this arena and it's kind of like they're in and they're out and they're they're out overnight but it's been sustainable yeah um you know nine years ten years in um now we, we feel that we've done a lot of good work um throughout the city um 
I've even had opportunities to still do some work at home where I grew up at, so oh, that, that in Philadelphia. So that's been uh, a blessing. Um, I've been able to do certain things with my brothers. So okay. um, you push that, that legacy um, reward mm -hmm. and pass it down. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really doing everything and entitling even homes into, you know, our nieces and nephews. So build um, generational building wealth. generational wealth. That's what and, we're about. And that, yes. that is something yeah. that is very important. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. It's not I easy. I wouldn't tell you it's easy. No, we need. This is this is not an interview where I'm like, oh man, this was really simple. Yeah, like, like this no, happened like, overnight. It, no, no, it's it, like, no, it does that, not happen overnight. That consistency look like this. As and and the, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you're only as good as the people that you put around you. For sure. And um, partnership is important. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that partnership and trust mm -hmm. is, is very important. So that was the model. Um, that was the goal. We're still here today. Uh, we're doing a lot of work. Uh, with partners um, like Neighborhood Housing Services mm -hmm. um, in uh, Baltimore. So the Panway Walbrook, we're doing a lot of work there now okay, um, with the CEO of uh, Dan Ellis, who's great, has always been a partner. Okay. Um, he basically, you know, this was like five years ago, uh, we talked and we were in and he said, you know, Kevin, I, have, I want to really do a huge redevelopment in, in Walbrook. Okay. And um, at that point, there was no money and no anything, right? We were just talking. And um, a few le few years later, there was a, a myriad of partners that came in and subsidy money that came in mm -hmm. um, to the organization. And at this point, you know, over 30 houses um, have been done in the Walbrook Panway area. Really? So. Wow, I have not, you know what? Shame on me, I've not driven over there such a long drive time over because there, of drive that, over there. I will go and take a trip to see yep, the new development. That was an amazing conversation with Kevin. And with election season right around the corner, let's take a look at what our other candidates have to say. I'm Deja Towns here with the Greater Baltimore Urban League, and we're here on the Voices of the People podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Kobe Smith, and we're here with... Uncle Wayne. Uncle Wayne. Go ahead, Kobe, take it away. So, Uncle Wayne, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to run for this mayoral campaign? Yeah, actually because of what Baltimore, uh, the situation we're in now, we need a whole lot of ideas, and we need to change Baltimore soon, real fast, before it gets worse. So I decided to run for mayor. That's how I watch out. To run for mayor because it's decided to put something different, like trade schools in the inner city, something to change the dynamics. And we got to do something real fast. So I decided to run for mayor. We're gonna put trade schools in the inner city of Baltimore. Yeah. Born and raised in Baltimore. And and the thing about it, I had a program called Get With the Program, which we decided that putting trade schools in, in the city of Baltimore and helped out. So now running for mayor, we decided to put four trade schools in the inner city. We decided because you had uh, broken down houses in the in the middle of the inner city, we decided if we put trade schools, have them work on the houses in the inner city. And that worked. Uh, the broken down houses and the trade schools in the inner city. So. We decided to put it together, and that's what Get With the Program is. Okay. So what made you come out to the candidate block party today? Because this is, and this is a unique one. They have forums all in the inner city, but we never actually had something like this. This get together here gives us a chance to go around to the tables and get a chance to see other ideas of Baltimore City too. Now put all of these ideas together, look what will happen. We could change Baltimore from the inside out. So Deja and I are both young professionals and there's tons of young professionals coming into Baltimore that are from Baltimore. We want to know if there's any advice that you have for the youth of Baltimore, young professionals that you would like to share. Yeah, absolutely. Put ideas together. See, if one person thinks that their idea is better than anyone else, it's not going to work. If you put all the ideas together like you did, then it'll work. See, together we can make this work. Listen, we got in this mess together. We got to get out of this mess together. Well, 
You guys heard it from Uncle Wayne. Wayne it is. Hi everybody, I'm Deja Towns here with the Greater Baltimore Urban League and we're here on the Voices of the People podcast. I'm here with my co-host Kobe Smith and we're also with Wendell Freeman. Kobe, take it away. Okay, so our first question for you is what made you run for mayor? Well, honestly, I've been wanting to run for mayor back in 2015 when Freddie Gray was going on and the, the city was in mayhem. Uh, I just wasn't eligible at the time. I was too young. Um, and, and, and right now, why I want to run because the time is now. I'm eligible. And, um, you know, it's time for change in Baltimore City. We just can't keep doing the same thing expecting different results. You know, and I just feel like I'm the change agent to move us to the future. Mm-hmm. So, I'm assuming, I, we're both young professionals, I'm assuming you're also young professionals. Do you have any words of wisdom to share with um, the youth of Baltimore, the young professionals out there that are looking to build, grow, and um, aspire to be great? Yes, I would tell them that the lot of lead pass is an excuse. Uh, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do anything. Uh, I'm the same person who uh, wasn't raised with my mom and dad. I was raised with legal guardians who told me every day I couldn't do anything. And I became the youngest CEO of a marketing company at 18 years old. You know, youngest candidate ever to run for mayor. You know, had my own house at 21 years old. So these are things where, you know, when people tell you that you can't do anything, I'm going to tell you that you can do anything that you want to do. So... Uh- you just listed off your, uh, the resume a little bit. That was amazing. But how did you position yourself to feel confident enough and all that as to become the youngest you can come to America? You know, it, it's, again, it's about the people. Um, a lot of people tell me is that, damn, I want to do that, but I don't, I, you know, I, I, it's like they, they don't have the voice to do it. You know, they, they're not, they don't want to be in the limelight. You know, so I'm just the voice for the voiceless. You know, the people who, you know, are tired of living in food deserts, the people that are tired of living in crime uh, and dirty, we're the dirty city in America. You know, stuff like that. People who just are tired of being sick and tired. It's time for a change, and I'm just the person that's going to do it. That's good. So, oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right, go. Okay. So we are at the candidate um, block party right now. What made you come out to meet with all these people to speak to all of them? Uh, yeah, what made me actually come out was that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, the, I'm for the people. You know, my campaign is about putting the people first. So anytime I have a time to interact with people, talk to people, and let them know about my vision for a better Baltimore, I'm always going to be there. You know, no matter if it's for two minutes, five minutes, or 30 minutes. You know, as long as I can get out what I need to say to the community, that's all that matters. I'm here with the Greater Baltimore Urban League on our Voices of the People podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Kobe Smith, and we're here with... Shannon Sneed, candidate for city council president. Take it away, Kobe. Okay, Um, Ms. Sneed, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to run for city council president? Listen, I was just frustrated about some of the things that was happening in our community, and I didn't see leadership in City Hall, essentially. And so I decided to put my hat, and I have a daughter that's in Baltimore City Public School. I'm a former journalist, and so I know that there are questions that we can ask. I know that there are things that we can do um, in terms of policy. And listen, I'm a former councilwoman. I've written policy, but I've worked with other folks um, to get good policy policy um, written and done and work with colleagues to actually get it passed. It, it's not up to one person, it's making sure that together, collectively, we can make a difference in Baltimore City. Exactly. So, do you have any um, words of wisdom or advice for young professionals growing up and trying to um, grow within Baltimore? Absolutely. Listen, I'm a graduate of University of Maryland Eastern Shore. I went to Morgan for my master's degree. Um, I am a public finance candidate, which means I am not taking any funds from any developers, unions, special interests. It all comes from individual people. And I say I'm like Shulman Chisholm. I'm unbought and unbought. And I feel like from the beginning, we need to make sure that we are actually putting our priorities first and doing things that we care about that will make a difference. So that's what I would tell young people. Sometimes it is not about the money. It is about doing the right thing. And it's about about serving our community, giving back. Uh, generations of before us said, listen, um, do the right thing, go to school, get a good education, and come back to the community so you can help and give back. And I've done exactly that. So that would be my same advice to you guys. And if, for the people who don't know me, I uh, want them to go to Shannon Sneed, S-N-E-E-D, for the number four Baltimore.com to hear more about my platform, things that I've done as a councilwoman to make a difference in our community. Um, things that don't just sound good, but that actually make a difference in everyday lives. Okay, that sounds good. Well, unless you have any other questions, you can go ahead. I do not. Thank you, Miss Snee, for coming out and speaking to us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Got it. Well, you've heard from the candidates. 
Now, let's go over to our Saturday Leadership Program, which is our 8th through 12th graders taking a college tour at Morgan State University. Uh, good morning, I am Dr. Edwin Green, Jr. I am a volunteer with the Greater Baltimore Urban League for the Saturday Leadership Program. We're here today at the National Treasure Morgan State University for one of our college sessions with our scholars. We talked today with our young people about the importance of voting and being engaged in the political process. And so you'll see we have information where we kind of went back in history and talked about the civil rights movement and, and suffrage, and we brought it all the way up to today with the current uh, mayoral debate uh, in Baltimore City. And so our program has been in existence for more than 15 years. I've been involved with it for most of those years. Our scholars overwhelmingly graduate the program and they go on to college. This is a college readiness leadership program. And so we're really happy to tout the success uh, of the program over the years. Bring your kids in, go to gbul.org to register. You can register at any time throughout the school year. And we're happy to have your young people participate in our program. Thank you. Wow, you guys just heard from the Saturday Leadership Program. If you're in the eighth through 12th grade and you're looking to get involved, don't hesitate, jump right in. Now let's get back to our conversation with Kevin Seawright, CEO of RPS Solutions. So I always ask people who are not from Baltimore, mm -hmm. Why Baltimore? When I was in the Navy, right? Mm -hmm. I would always meet people that would be like, oh, mm -hmm. when I'm getting out, I want to move to Baltimore. And I'm like, why Baltimore? And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm from Baltimore. So I always people ask people, why Baltimore? I love Baltimore, but you know, what, what made you choose Baltimore? Oh, I mean, to be honest with you, it's just a smaller version of Philadelphia. It is. Uh, uh, so uh, it wasn't a major, <laughs> uh, it wasn't a major adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, it still was, you know, like what I knew. I wasn't too far from yeah. what I knew. Uh, I mean, there's nuances no matter where you go. Now I've lived, you know, I've been in Philly, I've lived here, I've lived in Newark. So, you know, I've been up and down the East Coast at this mm -hmm. point. Um, but the nuances of Baltimore are not much different than Philly. So um, yeah. it wasn't like I moved from, you know, Philadelphia and went to Charlotte. Or Charlotte. It, right. it felt very uh, easy to adapt mm -hmm. um, and I wound up staying. So uh, I've I been here that. for, you know, over, well, I don't want to say my age, but uh, <laughs> been here for a little while now. Been over a little while. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's amazing. For a little bit. So. <clears throat> Being a real estate developer, mm -hmm. what advice would you give, you know, everybody wants to be in real estate. Everybody mm -hmm. wants it because they think it's quick money, it's a quick fix, it's a quick come up. What advice would you give these people <laughs> that want to just jump into real estate because they think it's something quick? What would you tell them? I will look directly into the camera and We're say this is you. not HGTV, right? Not I think <laughs> this is not a TV show. Right. Mm -hmm. When you get into this, you have to have a plan. You have to have a group, mm -hmm. um, and and you have to have a real understanding of the market. Mm -hmm. And the market can change. I mean, just in the last few days, um, you saw that we thought we heard that mortgage uh, rates were supposed to drop three times this year. Mm -hmm. And as you saw the other day, a monumental shift came out through the government where they said, "Well, guess what." We changed our mind. Yep, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen because of inflation. They blame mm -hmm. it on inflation. Um, but you, you have to have a real understanding for where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be data driven. Mm -hmm. You have to work on your credit because you always want to make your revenues being able to get credit from other people. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you don't want to invest everything just that you own all the time into mm -hmm. it. You want to make sure that you're established to where. Uh, you can get funding to, to do these projects. And you're talking about business credit, business right? Credit. Okay. Yes, absolute business credit. But you have to make sure that your personal credit is, is right is before okay you get your before business they're credit. Give you yeah, business they credit. Won't even so, touch you. Um, so that that's very important. But mm -hmm. again, um, this is not get rich overnight. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be prepared to. You can be prepared to make fifty thousand dollars, but you better also be prepared to lose five thousand dollars. Absolutely. And uh, and you can't be in a world of panic when, when you, you lose do. the five thousand yeah. dollars. So, um, so I would really say that like that that's a huge huge point to this. Um, mm -hmm. This is not something that happens overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something that takes practice. It is something that takes takes a team. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not something that you 
do by yourself. By yourself, right? Yeah. Um, you, you really do need help. You're not going to be established. Um, also, making sure you understand it if you get that far to start to invest who your contractors are. Yes. And, and make sure that you build uh, those relationships. And then understanding, even if you own a business, uh, the most important individuals in your development is your contractors. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have this saying all the time, people work with you, not for you. That's right. And I would say that those are the, the, the biggest attributes to understanding and being successful long term. Okay. Uh, in this. Well, thank you for that. Let me ask you, what are some of the things mm -hmm. outside of real estate development, favorite hobbies that Kevin likes to do? Um, I'm avid about working out. Um, I'm old now. I, I, you know, I have torn myself up so or beat my body up so I can't play basketball as much as I would like okay. um, I'm avid about sporting events um, avid about sports I'm a huge investment in family um, and, and giving back so I have nephew I have a nephew playing uh, AAU I have a, a niece that is um, in competitive dance and trying to go to all those events. I have a daughter that is 21 who's now in George Mason. So okay. um, just trying to be supportive of uh, the youth to come behind you so mm -hmm. they, they understand um, that this hard work is not for naught yeah. uh, and it's giving them the uh, opportunity to be successful also. So for me, it's just around uh, family, uh, making sure that we you know, have something to hand over mm -hmm. uh, is extremely important. Um, I think it's no secret that that has not always been what we've been taught in, in our community. Just go get a and job. Just go get a job. Yeah, go get a job. I mean, I know what I was taught. And, yeah. You know, my mom might kill me if she sees this on tape, but, you know, it's like, <laughs> you get a job with the government, you're just supposed to stay oh, forever. Like, I, don't don't ever leave. I you know, like. I a job and, and I left and my dad thought that I was insane. Absolutely. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what do you I, mean? I, I wasn't happy. Yeah, <laughs> and and but we weren't taught. Like, yeah. and, and again, that's no knock mm -hmm. on um, our heritage or or our relatives who, mm -hmm. who felt felt that way. It was a different time, and evolution, different gener in a different generation. Yep. And um, so that's that's not you know the overall goal mm -hmm. that you want to get out. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know, I say this to people all the time. Everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. I agree like, 100%. you cannot force yourself and right now and I don't want to say anything negative publicly about social media I I love it I embrace it um, but there's some pros and cons to everything absolutely and um, you cannot there is no get rich quick scheme um, there is no I'm going to have it now 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 mm -hmm. um, you will get what you work for that's it um, no matter how hard that work is um, mm -hmm. and that will elevate you to the point that you get to Kevin has no idea how home he is hitting for me, okay? <laughs> um, I well, we too. Also make sure we don't get canceled. No, we won't get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I too um, have a love for the sports and athletes. I have two athletes. My daughter plays basketball, my mm -hmm. son plays football. Okay. Um, so that yeah. is amazing. My heart it. is definitely into supporting you too. Mm -hmm. um, so if I had to ask you what your definition, I don't want the textbook definition, I want your definition of community. What is your definition of community? I think supporting one another. Um, for me, that that's the, the biggest piece. Um, and we're, we're struggling in our community. If we're, we're being honest, like we are yeah. absolutely struggling yeah. in our communities. That sense um, of partnership is a struggle nationwide. Like I, I try not to look just at Baltimore. I mean, I'm up and down the road all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a lot, right, mm -hmm. in my travels. And um, that sense of community it, is waning. Like it's my definition of it, but I'm, I'm very concerned now. Um, of, of how we're trying to hold it together, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's just uh, so much crime uh, in mm -hmm. our communities right now, you know, lack of things for children to do. Um, yes. Understanding of um, how we support parenting. I think that, that's a huge thing that I think that a lot of um, municipalities are missing, right? And fixing and how we parent. Because one of the things I always say, Kevin, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, but we, we, we love the way we learn. Agreed. And so mm -hmm. we parent the way we were taught. Mm -hmm. and, but at some point, mm -hmm. we have to learn how to break those cycles because we, we pull the best things from our parents and the things that weren't so great, 
we make better. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I agree 100%. Well, the goal of any parent is you always want to be better than your parent. Absolutely. And, and that doesn't mean that your parents were bad. Mm -hmm. you know, no, for right? sure. It means like any every generation you want to improve. Mm -hmm. And I say to other people, I, I say with our youth, when people complain, I say so often, um, every generation is just going to be better, better or worse yep. at what you gave them. That's true. That's right? True. And, and a lot of times we do a great job at blaming, mm -hmm. um, but we don't look at the cycle and, and, and how we got there. And um, I think that that's really important. But to go back to your question, I do think that a huge sense of community is important because it drives everything else, right? If you have support in your community, if you, you know, have Miss Johnson or because everybody's not going to have them, like we all know, like everybody's not going to have a mother, father, or whatever. Like it's not that your complete family unit. Like yeah. that's, I mean, it, it's not realistic. It's not. Anymore. Anymore. As sad as that mm -hmm. sounds, it's, it's not completely real. The data supports mm -hmm. what it is. So we're not saying anything out of line. Um, but at the same time, you still had, you know, Ms. Johnson or uh, uh, Ms. Logan or mm -hmm. whoever that is um, that really came in and tried to make sure that they supported mm -hmm. um, what was going on. And I think neighborhood grandma, neighborhood grandma. Yeah. And, and, and now we're, we're missing a, a lot of that. We right? are missing. And it. the sense of, of community, I think, it, to me, is the most important thing. And it's something that we just have to continue to, to navigate and work on. Uh, and not be like the old people in the room. Cause you know, they don't be like that. Like, oh, mm -hmm. it's, there's no chance, there's no shot. None right. never gonna change, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. um, try not to, to be that, and I have He's no so problem. pessimistic. Yeah, 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 and I have no problem, you know, given my age, I was just being uh, facetious earlier, but at, yes, at 48 years old, I don't view things the same way I did at 25. And you're young, sir. Yeah, but okay. I don't want to be, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. know. We're my, young at 48. My knees don't feel young, <laughs> but, um, but at the same point, um, yeah. as we as we move forward, you also don't want to be uh, the person who's like, it's never going to get fixed. It's yeah. like, how are you going to be a part of that? What do you do? Um, and, I, and I'll be honest, some days it's a struggle. Like, you know, we practice wanting to give individuals mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like, that is so important in, in our community and we just can't give up. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, I think that what you're doing with all the work that you're doing in the community is the first start, right? And you're, you're bringing the community together in the way that you are. And so I think that that's the first start. We're trying. Yeah. I mean, we're absolutely trying. I think um, community development is important. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in, in our city and in our urban communities, they should look, I don't think that, you know, North Avenue should look like, I don't know, Cockeysville houses, right? Like, or I don't, Towson or Avenue. Towson Avenue. You know, like, I don't, I, I don't think that there should be a real difference. And there um, was a time yeah. where it wasn't. Absolutely. There was a time where, and I was alive mm -hmm. during that time where North Avenue did not look the way that it mm -hmm. looks now. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, real estate developer, developers like you guys mm -hmm. are coming in to make our land mm -hmm. beautiful again. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that, that's the overall goal. Yeah. Um, but for me, I, I never, I never make a misunderstanding that I want to see individuals become home owners so they can tend that to everything else. Exactly. People don't understand how important home ownership to the economy, right? Yes. Let them um, know. How many people buy dictates Home Depot, dictates yeah. markets, right? Like it, oh. all that data dictates when people are buying what's actually built in that in that community. I did right? not know that and it makes sense because Absolutely. I always say it's not a lot of neighborhoods in Baltimore where you will find a grocery store, a bank, a mm -hmm. school, or um, it's four things, a grocery store, a bank, a school, or rec center, or right, or but, uh, rec center, they're yeah, all closed, so, but yeah. you know, you uh, won't be able to find all those mm -hmm. three things in one community in That's Baltimore. Right. You have to travel, at least a good grocery store anyway, you would have exactly. to travel. Food deserts, I mean, what we call yeah. them is food deserts. And um, you do have groceries that are coming Hospital in, you know, and is hospitals. the fourth. Exactly. Yep. So, um, so you do have, you know, other businesses that are coming in now that are trying to be more supportive mm -hmm. of that. But the data also has to support it. Any good business is going to look at data before yes. they make any decisions. So exactly. I'm not going to put 
potentially a Home Depot in a neighborhood where 82% of the people are renters. Are renters, yeah. Like, what well, am I going to do with I, that? What am but, I going to do with that? Yeah. And, and so often we blame, mm -hmm. um, as, as a society, we blame the businesses, right? Can't blame but, the businesses. Um, but you have to take that opportunity to actually try to figure out the home ownership level. And then the home ownership tends to help you in so many different levels, mm -hmm. right? You own you own your home. Um, you get equity you in your equity, home. equity, I was about to say. Right? Yeah. There's so many different things you can do with it. Now, when you start talking about you want to be an entrepreneur and there's different things that you want to do, whether it's lines of credit and things of that nature, you, you can use your home, you can use your home to get there. Yeah. And, and, and so it's just like a major, major step, right? Like our community has not always had the opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to mommy and daddy for a hundred thousand bucks. That's real talk. I mean, I know I didn't. I, I definitely, um, I still don't. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like that, that, that wasn't realistic for me. Yeah. And um, so, you know, you had to get out and you had to churn and you had to try to make strategic steps to get to get where you wanted to go. And um, so that's why home ownership and that development is so important. Um, this is not in light of anybody who's renting, right? Mm -hmm. Like that is important too. Like yeah. having a rightful place to live and, and raise your kids is important. Mm -hmm. um, but the goal is to always to see, uh, to always see individuals own their own home. Absolutely. Kevin, I appreciate you making this conversation so easy. It I'm was so easy. Back. You made it so easy. Do you have any back. questions for me? No, no. All right. Yeah. I'm glad that you had me. I'm um, glad that you are here. Yeah, definitely. And I will come anytime. Thank you. And let me yeah. tell you why it was important for me to have you before we go. It was mm -hmm. important for me to have you and people like you because I always like to have people on the show that our youth can look at as an attainable goal. Mm -hmm. And with you saying, I grew up in a, in a house with my brothers and my mom and my dad and mm -hmm. in Philly and we didn't have money and, mm -hmm. you know, um, kids can look at you and say, oh my God, well, I can possibly become a real estate developer and help to develop all of Park Heights. You know, mm -hmm. you are an attainable goal. Mm -hmm. And so people like you are very important for the voices of the people. Podcast. Absolutely. I think, and I, it's not about a real estate developer. It's about you can be important, period. Period. I was about... So, like, it, I don't <laughs> care what you want to be, yes. right? Um, if you want to work uh, at Solid Waste, and well, you be the best Solid Waste person That's you it. can be. Right. Yeah. If you want to be the CEO, you be the best damn CEO that be you can be. CEO. But I don't I don't want to, you know, peg anybody into a certain position because mm -hmm. what is for me might not be for somebody else. For sure. The only thing I can say is that you can be important. You are important. Mm -hmm. And and that that's the that's the main goal, no matter what you do. You are important and consistency and hard mm -hmm. work will get you wherever you need to be. Absolutely. You should always want to compete and outwork. Exactly. Right. People, there's always going to be somebody more intelligent than you. Mm -hmm. Consistency is the key. Well, and I want well, to be around that person. Yeah, too. you you want consistency, yeah. and because consistency is the one thing that you know won't waver. It doesn't waver, and it, it looks waver. different it all looks the time. Different. You know, yeah. consistency isn't always you win every day. Consistency is sometimes you win and then you lose, and then you lose, and then you lose, and then you win. Win, 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 and then you lose, and then you're tired, you don't feel like it, and you know, so it just oh, looks mean, different. Go farther than that. People telling you you can't do it, um, yeah. people telling you you're not going to be good enough, and you yeah. have to go through something. Trust me, I, I went through something in my career yeah. where, you know, I had to question was I good enough? Like, who, <laughs> who am I? Am I just wrong, right? Like, um, you're going to go through, you know, so obstacles and right. hurdles, and you have to have that that level of tenacity. Um, and again, it's not, uh, you know, I never live by the, oh, I brought myself up by the bootstraps, I think. Yeah, I, I know. I don't, <laughs> I mean, anybody who truly knows me know I have a mouth on me, so I'll keep yeah. it clean. But the, um, you know, I don't particularly subscribe to individuals who believe like that, because the only way when you go through obstacles is you hope to have positive people in your circle, because mm -hmm. To be successful, you question yourself so much. You do. Um, oh. like you question yourself. Um, there's times where you don't feel it, where you, you know, um, part of my job and is always to be on, mm -hmm. um, no matter whether I'm, you know, uh, oh, VP at Enterprise or I'm working with NHS or I'm the board mm -hmm. chair of Park Heights. You know, I, I, you know, you you have to be on, and not every day do you feel like that. Mm -hmm. Right? There, there's it's days hard. where you really don't feel like that. <laughs> And, um, and you still have to do it. So there, there's a level of support and tenacity that you have to have um, 
to navigate. I agree. And, and success is people, everybody think it's great, it's ugly. And sometimes success, lonely. It is very lonely. Sometimes lonely. Very, very yeah. lonely. And you can't tell anybody. Nope. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know, when you have those lonely times, it's not easy um, to express. That's true. And, um, and being successful, there's a lot, you know, with what they say, heavy is the head that wears Where's the, the crown. crown. And, um, <laughs> and people think it's a crown. But it's not, it's like a bunch of trash it's, bags it's sitting on top of your head. Yeah, right? literally, literally <laughs> trash cans and bags. Right. And, um, but heavy is the head that wears the crown because, mm-hmm. you know, usually uh, if you garner yourself to a certain point, you're always trying to be mindful of uh, do people want to be in your space mm-hmm. or do they just want? That's the thing. And yeah. um, so you, you you always have to be very mindful of um, who's, who you're in contact with and, mm-hmm. and who you believe in. And who things you allow like your energy and to be shared Who you allow your energy to be shared with. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So, that circle is important. Circle is very important. Very I mean, important. You, you know, you said the thing to kids and, and you know, any time I talk to youth, my daughter included, mm-hmm. anybody, like your circle is so important. You choose your, your friends, you choose your lifestyle. You choose right? top five. Yeah. The, the five people that are around you are probably who you're going to be. And I want to be the least intelligent person in my circle. Absolutely. So that I can keep growing. Absolutely. Yeah. When you make yourself vulnerable, mm-hmm. you know, early, funny you say that, like early in, in a career, right, you're fighting, like you're competitive. Like, you I got to be better, better at I be everything. Better yes. Everything. Yes. Like, yes. I'll be better than everybody. I don't want to be broke again. Right. I don't want to come up like you guys. I just mm-hmm. gotta be better than than, than everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not losing. Right. I tell you what, my career took off when I became vulnerable. Yeah. And um, where it wasn't a fight that I gotta be better. Now you still do need to be good, right? You still know, need we, to be we, great. We have a society where great. everybody gets a trophy. I'm yeah. not really on board about that either. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we not no shade yeah, the little league, not, right? Yeah, I'm not on board with everybody gets a trophy. But however, right? Like. Yeah. Um, when I became vulnerable, and as you said, like never be the smartest person um, in the room, yeah. right? Always doesn't mean that um, you lack depth, right? right? Yeah. But people are so much, they're willing to give more to you, mm-hmm. right? When you're not trying to be the yeah. smartest person in the room. And that's just, you know, advice that I, you know, I try to give to, to, to everyone yeah. um, that is trying to, you know, excel in their career. and things of that nature it's like you know be vulnerable right like you know it's okay not to know right, right? it's okay like, it's absolutely okay not to know yeah. and and being okay with you don't know because people will be more apt to, to give you the information absolutely yeah. well there you have it voices of the people we appreciate you thanks for having me thanks I, for coming i truly appreciate it thanks for all the people who uh, got me here today. I yes. appreciate the behind the scenes and obviously the on the scenes. Absolutely. And you guys heard it. He said he will be at Afro Break. So we are holding him to it. I will be there. Okay. Next. Join us in the next episode of Voices of the People, you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, kings and queens, for joining us on the Voices of the People podcast. Until the next time, peace.